Hi, and welcome to the Savage Podcast. I'm Rose, also known as Cheap Lazy Vegan on YouTube. And I'm Daniel, one of your favorite guest stars on Cheap Lazy Vegan's YouTube channel. We're two friends who love to talk about the latest trending topics. So get comfortable and join us while we give our savage take on just about everything. You are currently listening to the previous episode of this podcast, but if you would like to listen to this week's episode and get some exclusive content, go over to patreon.com slash the savage podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of the Savage Podcast. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Mm-hmm. How are you doing, Daniel's Rose? A little, Daniel's a little grumpy today. <laughs> I am He not. just had a fit with me. Okay. And then I died laughing. <laughs> It, was, it wasn't really a fit. I was just like trying to test the mics and Rose was like, she was like, Daniel, we need to, well, first Rose was like, Daniel, we need to test the microphones. So I was like, okay, cool. So I was like testing and then she wasn't speaking into her microphone. She was like busy doing something else. And I was like, Rose, speak into your microphone. We need to test this shit. Yeah, you, the, the tone was a little bit more angry than that. Come on, I don't get angry, okay? Okay, Daniel. I, I, I just saw something very different. Did you? Anyway, guys, uh, let's start with Patreon shout Oh, God damn. Let's just jump in. We got Let's a few. Let's jump right in. That's true. Okay. So we are giving shout outs to Ar- Ar- Arlana. Arlena. Arlena, it looks like. Mm-hmm. And Dustin. And Thomas. Thanks, guys. Thanks for joining our Patreon. If you guys don't know, we do have a Patreon where we do exclusive content every month. And um, mm-hmm. last month, we talked about Squid Game. Yes. This month, we don't know yet. To well, actually, be determined. <gasps> I did a little poll. Well, not a poll. Ooh, I, put, I put a question out there. And? Getting some interesting responses back. <laughs> I'll, I'll actually, Y'all are creative. What mm-hmm, are they? I love it. There's one that's actually... Actually, I'm going to read it out because it sounds okay. cool. Okay. Fun. Anyway, if you want to join us on Patreon, it is patreon.com slash the savage podcast. It's an exclusive little community for us. And um, you get to, you know, interact with other patrons and also get episodes a week earlier than everybody else. So the one that I think is kind of cute that I kind of want to do. Okay. We'll see. We'll, we're, okay. we'll, we're, still, we'll, we're still brainstorming ideas and we got lots of suggestions. For November one- Patreon exclusive? Exactly. Okay. And one of them was we should do the 36 questions in love from the New York Times. The questions are supposed to bring you closer together and could also be applied to friendship. So I thought that'd be. I think I've, I've heard of this. Are I they know. like really deep? I don't know. I hope they're God not too damn. deep. God well, damn. We, are we allowed to skip the question? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that sounds very intimate. Is this? Mm. Are you sure this is for friendship? I think it is. I think we're when we when we uh, or do is it, this is this something you need? We need to do before we get married. No, I heard that one of the one of the rules for this rose is actually you have to sit facing each other with hands in each other's palms <laughs> and looking into each other's eyes. That and sounds not like a marriage. <laughs> so I proposed to Daniel. <laughs> I said no. No. <laughs> Let's talk about that for a second. Oh, God damn. We're going to talk about that. Over brunch, I proposed to Daniel. Mm-hmm. We did. We talked about it. <laughs> it was a business transaction, but he <laughs> said no. Yeah. Basically, my idea... Here's the thing, guys. I'm half serious. Okay, let's hear your hear your <laughs> logic behind this, Rose. Behind the... Uh, what is it? Well, the unnuclear family? Not unnuclear. The, the, un- the non-nuclear un- family? <laughs> untraditional family. <laughs> Basically. Here's the thing. Okay. What's the thing? As we talked about it, as we've talked about many times, the idea of marriage is uh, the the idea of romantic marriage, marrying for love, is a very new concept. It's very new, yeah. So for many, many years, people just got married. It was like it was almost like a business transaction. It was a it was a marriage of the families. People got married because Mm -hmm. of financial reasons, because of status, whatever. Yeah. Okay. Stability to have children. Okay. To To stop to stop feuds. As well, like to if there's, stop feuds. Yeah, like if families were feuding or something, they'd try to like maybe, maybe not marry feud. two people. Yeah, marry God off damn. and like I don't know. I think it's I think it was a thing back in the day. It was a thing back in the day. Joining sure the houses, you know, basically anything but love. Yeah, <laughs> basically. Yeah. So then the concept of yeah marriage for love is new. So I said to Daniel, you know what? We could just have an open marriage. Yeah. Where you know we marry not because we I mean obviously we love each other but not mm-hmm. in the same way that other people <laughs> love not each other in, in marriages not in the sexual not way, in the sexual way yeah. because Daniel is a homosexual. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to. I know, I love. I it. had to. Okay, so because of that, um, yeah, we could mm-hmm. get married. Mm-hmm. Okay, but as a as more of a companionship. And then adopt little babies exactly. from Korea. And you know what I said to Rose? Like, I'm actually kind of on board with this because it, it is like a business transaction. I said, Rose, if I can live in your place rent free, I'm on board. <laughs> Daniel, I am not going to be the breadwinner. You, you can be, you can support me. I'm not going to be the breadwinner. Oh, God damn. Well, I guess you could watch the babies. Yeah, I could be a, stand, a stay-at-home dad. <laughs> but do I trust you to watch babies? <laughs> Probably not. Oh, God. I have to do everything around. You know what? I'm going to retract my mm-hmm. offer. Oh, God damn. My proposal. God 
Damn it, be retracted. I need to find a gay that uh, has their shit together a little more, maybe. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for that. <laughs> oh, God damn. Um, but anyways, if anybody wants to take part in that kind of thing, then mm-hmm. you know what? You have my blessing because, you know what? Actually, in all seriousness, mm-hmm. I do think those types of marriages, like friendship marriages, they do. would last longer. Yeah, this, is, this is the thing. It's an interesting concept. And I think more and more, again, like obviously we're still very much tied to that like nuclear family marriage. But I do think as we're like evolving, I guess, or not even evolving, I'm not gonna call it an evolution, but like we're becoming more open to that idea. The I, The concept of like, you know, maybe a couple with another partner, like that's not a sexual partner, but like a f- group of people living together and like raising kids and, oh, you know, damn. just- Different like kind a of commune. Yeah, just different kind of permutations and combinations of like <laughs> what makes the like family unit, sure. you know? And and like there's there's arguments out there to be like, you know, again, we talk about like the we talked about this before in other episodes of the podcast. <laughs> you guys should check out our episode on modern love. That was really to, good. Was that on Patreon? No, no. Oh, it's it's on live. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. I'm pretty sure there's a public episode. It's one of our first episodes. Yeah, I it's think. like a long, long we are on like episode like 102, oh, guys. God, look at us. This okay. Is crazy. Even though our life is in shambles, we still meet every week for every this. Every single week. Just to guys, let you know, our lives are in shambles. This is some dedication, okay? <laughs> Let's actually, you know what? Just oh god damn. Delta. <laughs> Rose has got Delta. I do. Someone actually, it's funny. Well, it's not funny, but someone commented on uh, our video. You know, the one we got food poisoning. Someone was like, maybe it was COVID. <laughs> <laughs> on guys, do you not think that crossed my mind? Um, of course it did. As I was like dying in my mm. bed, I was like, "Oh my god, do I have COVID?" But I don't think the stomach symptoms is a symptom of COVID. It's more I mean, like it could lungs. Be, I, mean, I feel like everything's a symptom of COVID. I know. But it is a lot less likely because I didn't have any breathing issues. Yeah. And also because I got better like mm. after two days. I remember when they were coming up. Well, they they tell like the list of like symptoms of it's COVID. It's everything it's, under the sun. It's exactly. It's like achy achy muscles. I'm like, oh god, every morning I wake up and I have fucking <laughs> achy muscles. It's like <clears throat> that's s- called aging, Daniel. No, I know slight <laughs> fever. I'm like, oh god, am I am I feeling a bit warm today? I know, I right? Know. You get like so paranoid, yeah. It's, especially in the beginning. I oh was god. like, oh my god, anytime my like my face would be like slightly warm, I'm like, oh my god, I have the vid. It's COVID. Well, it was really scary in the beginning, though. It was, even though it was like less, like the numbers weren't as crazy as later on. I know, but I think it's because there was just so many unknowns. Yeah, and like I remember also because I was in Spain at the time, and it was fucking crazy there because it's like I know that shit was locked down. There was military patrolling the streets. I felt like <laughs> so, I was in a movie. Seriously, I was like, this it's is dystopian. crazy. Yeah. It was crazy. Anyway, so yeah, marriage. Uh, mm-hmm. What else were we talking about? We were talking about, well, one thing we're going to talk about is the dedication we have to this fucking podcast. Because <laughs> I was going to say, you know what, guys? You've God. been, you, those of you that have been with us since the beginning of this journey, we have literally traveled countries. <laughs> we've, we've, we've traveled across Canada. We've traveled across <laughs> Canada. Like it has been a journey throughout this. Yeah, we haven't missed one episode. No. Have we missed one episode? No. No, we have not. We may have been late a couple times. We, we've definitely been late. But we've never like missed fault, a week. <laughs> we've never missed a week. Yeah. Even when we came back from, was it Montreal or Toronto, where we like literally landed and then just straight went to the podcast. Yes. Yep. Guys, give us a star. I know. Give us, give give us, us a rating. Fi- give us five stars. Okay. okay just we for that. We deserve it. Okay. <laughs> Ugh. But we, anyway. but, the, but part of the reason why is obviously we love doing this as well. Yes, because so, we love talking. Yeah. 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 As you can see. <laughs> yeah. Um... But it's great. It's fun. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And there's some neat little things that we're going to try to chat about today. Yeah. So some of them, okay, I have a couple stories, but then also they have a couple like things that I just wanted to generally talk about. Oh, oh God. Which, which which should go, I can't talk. Which should, 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 yeah. um, should come first, the news or your random talk? Um, A little bit of both. Why don't we start with one of my random talks? Okay. Is this, is this going to be a rant? No, it's not okay. a rant. Well, mm, okay. I just think, let let it out, Daniel. I think we've kind of talked about this before. Um, I don't have a particular article that I'm pulling from or anything, but sure. I've just been watching a few. Like, and this is more around city planning and zoning of. So it is going to be complaining. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, no, but it was interesting because I was I was watching this this video and basically they were saying. And, and you guys have heard us talk about this a lot about the North American model of like sure. cities and stuff and about how like in Europe, it's very like it just feels more cultured and there's more, you know, stuff going on only because like, well, not only because, but like I feel like a big part of that is the way that their cities are structured. Yeah. And th- um, this this person that did this video was like arguing about how um, what helps like Europe is a- a- and other cities that are similar to that, that kind of structure is they have multi zoning like permits where it's like. You know, for example, like in a city like Calgary, it's almost like you have 
almost like one or the other. You either have like a single family home or you have a sky, like a, a tower. Yeah. You do have the occasional like townhouses and whatever else. But overall, the main choices are a condo or a single family home. Okay. Those are like your choices. And they're saying like a lot of cities, the zoning is either for a, a high rise or um, a single family home. Sure. So what happens is people think, oh, well, I only have the two options. Whereas they're like, if you start zoning for multi-purpose um places like yeah. terrace housing, small apartment buildings, right. this kind of stuff, it kind of creates more of a livable city, you know? Oh, interesting. Mm-hmm. Oh. Because the more, and I'm sure everyone like that lives in these kind of cities knows, the more single family homes that you have, the actually the worse the city, like I feel like is. Yeah, you think so? Because it gets bigger, it gets more urban sprawl. Is like, it simply our opinion though? I do want to know like, Well, no, just think. I don't think it is, though, because it does make sense. Exactly. Well, think about it. Think about, like, even in Calgary, in some of the suburbs, like, some of the suburbs, if you live there, let's say you want to go get a coffee. You know what I mean? Like, you literally have no choice, pretty much, except to get into your car. Yeah. Like, and then you have to find parking. And then, you know, there's always an extra, like, level, which, you know, some people don't mind driving. But at the end of the day, the more people that you have living in those kind of environments, the more traffic you're going to have, the more. um, And also, our, like, the cost to the city to maintain a city that's like constantly expanding out yeah. isn't like great. What is this video? I want to see it. It's right here. Um, you should link it to the in the in the description. Yeah. But oh, it's right here. Oh, so this is based in America. So yeah. is is where we live? Is it also like yes. the same issue? They, they they showed a they showed a bar graph of like cities in Canada as well. Oh God! And it's uniquely the one that was the least of this problem was Montreal. Which is not surprising at all, which is exactly. why Montreal is the most cultured city in Canada. Which when you That's go... That's part of it. Exactly. When you go to Montreal, you see like this vibrant city and like mm-hmm. because you have all of these like um, kind of like multi-units, but they're not like necessarily skyscrapers, but they're like kind of smaller, but there's lots of them. Right. Oh, so the, like the smaller, it almost looks like a house, but like a tall house. Yeah. And then the, like there's like different units in each one, like the Airbnb we stayed in, exactly. for example. Exactly. And that's what they say. Like, because a lot of people are like, oh, I don't want to live in a concrete high rise. Right. And if you have I a, see what you're saying. Exactly. And if you think about like, even think about our downtown core, mm-hmm. if you have a lot of concrete high rises, it, it, it doesn't make the community like that sure. appealing. Do you know yeah, what I because mean? It, yeah. You don't really like, it's not like, you know, your neighbors and it's not yeah. like if, but if I, if you were to live in like a smaller kind of maybe a duplex even, or yeah, yeah like a smaller like building with multiple units, mm. you're much more likely to get your, to know your neighbors. Of course, Cause it's very like close, close proximity. Exactly. Like there's, there's no people. elevator or whatever. Yeah. That's so true. So it just, it, it creates a, like this feeling of community, this like, you know, you're going to have like local coffee shops and things yeah. like around the area. So I think. So uh, why is it that it's one or the other? Why don't they mix things up? A lot of it is the zoning permits like that the uh-huh. city allows. And a lot of it is now that because we, we, we evolved so much around a car, car culture uh. in North America that like. And also, it's just like what we're pumped in the media, right? Like everybody wants a single family home. Like they want a f- white picket fence. It's so stupid. And <laughs> yeah, I'm, again, I'm not knocking people that have that. You know what I mean? I'm like, yeah. that's, you know what? That's the reality of the city that you're in. And if mm-hmm. you, that you know, you, you know, that's what's available to you. But I feel like if we had more of those kind of options. Yeah, it'd be nice. It would be really nice. And I think yeah. it, it is starting to change. So I think cities are starting to realize or people are starting to realize these like sure. huge urban sprawls, like just aren't beneficial yeah. for anyone. Are people you know? try- starting to realize? I think so. I think that the Not more... Not where we live. Oh, God damn, Rose. I think it is because if you think about like inner city Calgary, they're starting to mul- to zone like multi, like, okay. you know, like they call, they call them infills, but they'll like oh, okay. take a property and put like two or three houses on it. Okay. Instead of one. Oh, interesting. God, I'm, it's be about that densification. <laughs> I know, right? It's so crazy mm. because I saw, I saw TikTok the other day and it was like, um, the sound was basically, it was like someone showing off their like beautiful home. It mm-hmm. was like very beautifully designed. It was very nice and cozy looking. Yeah. And the sound was basically like someone being like, when you make your home like really nice or whatever, mm-hmm. then you, you just don't want to leave it. So you just stay home. Mm-hmm. And they made it sound like it was like a good thing. And I'm just sitting here like, bitch, like y'all just been complaining about the fucking pandemic about staying home. Yeah. And now you're being like, oh yeah, you know, it's so great to stay home. And mm-hmm. I'm like, I get it. Like, I understand yeah. that you want to make your home a home. Like cozy and... But at the same time, like, this idea that, like, somehow staying in all the time and mm-hmm. not going out is, like, 
preferable. Exactly. Well, and I think I think the pandemic, if anything, has taught us that that's yeah. not the case. I know. Right? Like people that stay in a lot. Like again, I'm, I don't want to like knock people that are like more introverted and like to have more time at home. I'm not saying yeah. that's an issue. I mean, but we enjoy staying home too. Exactly. But, I do. Like, yeah. but I think it, it's important to have that balance. And I think if you like this concept of like making your house this place that you always are in. Yeah. It's like, it's not even good for you as a person because we're social beings exactly. naturally, right? So and what, what concerns me is like back again, even if we consider like back in the day, I don't know, 50s or 60s, yeah. even if people lived in maybe like single family homes, mm. I feel like there was a lot more of like, I guess that community aspect of people yeah. like maybe kids playing on the street with like the other kids and mm. people just going over to people's houses with like, I don't know, just like snacks and yeah. just chilling and doing all that kinds of stuff. That stuff is like gone now. I know. It's so, like completely yeah. gone. So if you stay home, like you're going to be home either alone or with whoever you live with. Yeah. That's it. You're not going to interact with other people other than on TikTok and social media. Mm-hmm. I wonder what the stats are because I would be really interested to like see if there's like, there's probably studies that have been done, but just to see if like we as a general society, like all people yeah. are becoming more and more and more <laughs> antisocial. I, I'm pretty sure. Like it would make I mean, sense. Yes, it makes sense. Yeah. And like there's a reason why like there's certain countries where like I think Mexico is like very mm. high up on like the list of like happiness when like shit's going down there every fucking day, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People are not like they're not rich. There's like turmoil, like mm. political turmoil, like people getting shot. Yeah. But like for a country like that, I don't know the actual statistics, but I remember like a few years ago, people were saying mm. how like Mexico is one of the happiest countries in the world. And it's probably because they have like a very like heavy Social, culture yeah. and yeah, they socialize a lot and they're, I don't know, they're like, they probably have a strong community. Well, this is aspect. the thing. That's like my, um, one of my, one of my good friends, husbands here is Mexican. Right. And honestly, like his family's always over from Mexico. Like they're very yeah. like, do you know what I mean? Like it's, yeah, a very, it's like that Latino, like family yeah. culture. And the extended family as well. Yeah. Like it's just like, it's like a big thing. It's huge. I'm so, sure there's some negatives to it, of course. There, I mean, there's pros and cons, but, but I, I do think like, it's nice to have that. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's very different here. Oh, hugely. Mm-hmm. Everyone's like focused on work. Fuck, and, what do we do, Daniel? I don't know. We start a community center, Rose. <laughs> Seriously, I'm like, should we start some kind of like, what? what is it? Like co-op, like a commune, like living? A commune? I don't know. You know what? I, people, I like do. a bunch of people like live together. Yeah. I would love to have like live. <laughs> I think if I, if, if we had one of these things in Calgary, like a, uh, like a small complex. Yes. But like had like a nice courtyard, kind of like yeah, a, yeah, like, like a, everyone um, lives in their own place. Yeah. But then you still have like a, a communal area, mm-hmm. That'd which be nice. almost like a, almost like a plaza, you know, like the plazas mm-hmm, they have in like mm-hmm, Europe mm-hmm, and stuff, mm-hmm. something like that, but maybe like an exclusive one to that building. Should we build one? God damn Rose. <laughs> On my, on my plot of land? You want we, we going to build it? <laughs> on my plot of land. Oh, God dang. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I think I think honestly I do hope, but I don't know if we're ever going to see it in our lifetime, the change that needs to happen well, we need these to, cities. We need to be the change that mm. we want to see, Daniel. <laughs> Damn, this is true as hell. Um, oh, anyways. Anyways, so I think we should talk about the first like, crazy story. Oh my God, the Travis Scott situation. Yes. What the fuck? What are your thoughts? Okay, well, I okay, so I'll be honest. I haven't read too much into it, but I did like listen to some like couple of videos. Mm-hmm. Um, so basically, I guess they had a festival. Yeah, some kind of like music festival, Astro World Festival, Astro World Festival in I think it was in where Florida? is it? In Florida, okay. Oh, no, no. In, no, in Texas, Texas, uh, somewhere in Texas. Houston. No, that's someone's name. No, oh no, Houston, Houston Mayor. Okay, yeah, Houston, so Texas. It's in Houston, yeah. uh, Texas. And yeah, eight people died. A bunch Mm. of people got injured, I think. And, but like, why did it happen? Did did people get trampled? Yeah. So I think, I think what had happened from my understanding of what I've read guys is there was a big, okay. First of all, there was some complaints about the security. There was people like rushing in and, you know, even at the beginning, some people were a little bit uneasy because there was like just so many people at this event. Um, But again, I mean, this is really standard, not what happened, but like the standard to have, um, this many people at a concert. Like, yeah, like how many is, people were there? 50,000 I think something, something like 50,000, yeah. So and they didn't go over capacity, I imagine. I don't think so. I think it was outside. So what exactly like happened where it was so out of control? Yeah, it was in a park. So what I think happened is basically it was during, um, like Drake was there and also Travis Scott. And I guess during their sets and stuff, like people were like, 
getting really, really crazy. Oh, it was sold out concert, sold out concert in Houston. And the crowd basically what happened became, began to compress towards the front of the stage. Right. So everyone's like trying to get to the front. They want to see the rappers. They yeah. want to like, you know, and as they're like pushing and there's just so many people around, oh my God. That, you know, some people got trampled, some oh, people God. got pushed up against the, the bars maybe. And like, and just like young people died super like 14 young. year old 16 year old 21 year olds th- 23 year olds 27 year olds like yeah that's fucked yeah. like the crazy thing is like it, it's it's really sad that this has happened and you know the thing is i also like this isn't the first time i've, I've like heard of this kind of oh, stuff happening oh it's concerts. happened yeah i think anytime you get that many people together in a place yeah. it can get dangerous so how okay because i know it i think it happened once at like um new kids on the block concert or something like it was some kind of big mm. it like something like that happened i've heard about it before like a long time ago and i'm sure yeah. it's happened in many other con- maybe not many but like some concerts yeah but so how okay but i've heard people have been like blaming travis scott yeah so what is that why so they, is that? They're, they're just basically blaming him from my understanding it's like they're blaming him for like getting the crowd like riled up and like you know but i think that's part of their job right like to yeah I don't get it. Mm-hmm. I did see some like people um, posting videos of him and his behavior in like previous concerts. Mm-hmm. And he is a little bit of a, you know, like maybe a little bit of a dick, a little bit irresponsible. Yeah. The way that he riles up the audience because yeah. you can rile up an audience, but also like, mm-hmm. you know, do it in a responsible way. But exactly. at the same time, um, I don't think he knew because some people are saying that like he didn't stop even though everyone was saying like stop the concert. Exactly. But I'm like, okay, we don't know that he knew that this was happening. Well, and this is this is part okay. of the reason why they got mad at him and also at Drake yeah. as well because they said that they continued to keep going yeah. even though there was people like, you know, dying and then, you know, the, it was get, the crowd was getting too crazy. Right. But also we have to remember like, I, again, I'm not pointing blame. I'm not saying anything, but like, I'm not saying anything. I am saying something, but like <laughs> when the rappers are on stage, like I could imagine, like it's hard to tell what's going on in the audience. It's 100%. Like there's lights. It's a yeah. dark, if it's dark mm-hmm. and you have lights on you as on the stage, you, you cannot see. see anything. Yeah. Like I can guarantee you, you cannot see anything. I've been on stages like that where yeah. it's like, you have lights everywhere and it's dark outside. You're you not going to be able to see anything. Yeah. Again, um, Maybe he could have done things differently, but I, I highly doubt that he knew that there were people being trampled. Yeah. And then he didn't stop. Exactly. No, like no it's one. It's hard in their, for me to believe exactly. that. No one, no sane person yeah. would be at their concert having people die in front of them being trampled yeah. and not stop shit. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Because like that would just be like an immediate. So I think, I think, you know, it's, it's, it's tough, but apparently some people are suing them. Yeah. I've heard this. So I just want to know, like. I wonder if the festival could have done something different because Mm -hmm. it says crowd safety experts insist that the tragedy could have been prevented by sticking Mm -hmm. to national safety standards. Mm -hmm. It says that um, according to Paul, whatever something um, head of the Los Angeles based crowd safety consulting firm, I guess they have one of those. Oh God. um, Got a consulting firm for everything, (laughs) don't they? There are standards in place passed by the national fire protection association Mm. meant to prevent incidents exactly like this one. So, um, so because festival seating, which only allows for standing, is known to be the most dangerous and deadly. Oh, God course. damn. I've been to a lot of festivals like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you still love to tell a tale, Rose. Oh, God. I is. Crowd configuration. Um, wait. Blah, blah, blah. It's imperative that the area does not become overcrowded yeah. and that there are especially trained crowd managers. Yeah. This is what I'm wondering. Like, did they have like security? Yeah. Uh, you know, that's the People thing. like actually, you know, because I do remember like when you would go to certain concerts, like to be fair, they do get like pretty crazy and they, they get do get crazy. really like there are times when you're like, am I going to like get trampled? Like yeah. if I fall now, I will probably be trampled. But at the same time, it's like there are people like on the outside that are kind of like kind of trying to, you know, keep it under control, keep it under control so that you're not going. It's not too, too think, insane. Think about how hard it would be. Like imagine you're that one of those people difficult. trying to keep it under control and there's like 50,000 people. Yeah, it's crazy. Like it, it becomes like almost impossible. Right? Yeah. Like I, I do like, you know, I'm, I'm wondering though, like, you know, is it the rappers that like organize this concert? Or no, I don't. I don't, it, it I would do be not their blame teams, the rappers. Right? I don't understand this blame for the rappers. Yeah, I think it's easy to blame rappers because it's their face out there, and it's their technically quote unquote event. Exactly, and it's their fans and stuff like that. But guys, we all know that these guys have like huge teams that yeah. handle all this shit. So yeah. really, I think some of the liability or accountability should come come down to okay, well, who was planning the teams, like or yeah. the, the teams who was planning the like security, the safety protocols, all of that stuff, like. Yeah. 
like yeah. that wouldn't have been like I doubt Drake and Travis Scott were, yeah. were sitting in a room being uh-huh. like guys we need to worry about this like safety issue yeah. like th- they're not doing that right like they're yeah. showing up to perform exactly I and, mean and, and, to and, blame them is a bit insane without exactly. I don't know if there's more information out there that we're missing yeah like I, I would hope though like as a um, if I was an artist and I was like performing at sold out concerts and stuff I would rely on the team that I'm working with to make sure that they had had done all that stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I would show up to perform and I would hope that they had done all this. Um, I guess Travis Scott did come forward and he said that he's going to pay all the funeral costs for those people. Oh God, that's that, so fucking sad. I can't I believe these kids died. It says um, there should be one crowd manager per 250 people at the very least. Mm-hmm. And it says, blah, blah, blah. There's nothing new in security, constantly monitoring the crowd for problems and then addressing them immediately. Um, and then it said that in his opinion, these standards were not followed at Astroworld mm. and things took a turn for the worse because nobody was minding the crowd. Yeah. They didn't stop the show. Even before Scott got on, they didn't stop the show to bring back some kind of sense of safety within the crowd. They played right through it and stopped once the casualties started mounting. Mm. If they would have stopped it and got it under control earlier, this would have never happened. Mm. I mean, and also I feel like kids like these are like teens yeah like what 14 year old 16 year old there's teens in this like i feel like when you have teens like if if you allow like underage you know people to be in your concert i feel like there should be extra security because it's like kids teenagers you know how they are they're Mm. like they think they are you know invincible exactly so i feel like if you're in in your 20s i feel like there's more people that are a little bit more like they're conscious they're like aware if they're like Mm. starting to be they might back up a little bit maybe okay but you got teens they might be doing some drugs okay yeah they might be drinking a little bit i don't know it's gonna get out of control you should have like very you know big safety protocols in place Mm -hmm. I saw really actually, and this, this happens a lot. Like, um, mm-hmm. I saw this really scary, um, video and I wish I could remember. I think it was in Madrid yeah, and it was a concert or something that had happened and people were trying to get in or get out. And literally there were so many people in this like entrance where this doorway was, people had fallen and people were like climbing over them to oh like, my God. and it was like just a mound of people. And it was just the chaos, such chaotic energy. Yeah. And I was like, I can't, I like, I would it, die. It's that's too much. So that's, that's honestly like, imagine like, that's like the worst. Yeah. Like imagine getting trampled. Oh, oh God. God. Well, you know what? I did have a scare. Um, not a trampling scare, but I got scared myself. Oh, was it in Spain? Portugal. Oh, Portugal. Yeah. So, I don't know. I, I think maybe as you get older, like you get more fearful of things sometimes. I think you get less. I don't know. For some reason, you get less um, tolerant of crowds. Yes, that's true. <laughs> so I noticed. So I was, I was in Portugal for my 30th birthday and there was a festival that was going on. Oh, what was it called? I can't remember, but there was like a really like f- a big thing going on. And me and my friends were in the like old district of Portugal, which is like yeah. very narrow. So no cars or anything can go there. It's all pedestrianized, but like narrow, windy streets with like, it was really cool area, like with little staircases that go up to places with like, yeah. so it's like multiple levels of paths with like, st- it's like a maze though. It's like yeah. kind of crazy. Yeah. So we get there and we're walking around and we go, we have some drinks, we're eating. And then we were like moving through and we end up in this situation where there's literally like just thousands of people around in these narrow, narrow streets. You can barely move. See, that is a safety hazard. Yeah. You can barely walk. And I actually started having like almost a mini panic attack. Yeah. Cause I was like to my friends, I was like, we need to get out of here. Like this is actually like stressing me out. Cause we were trying to like get down these stairs and there was just so many people and I started panicking because like I couldn't yeah. figure out the way to get out. Oh God! And I was like, I, I just need, I need to breathe. Like I feel yeah. like I'm gonna, because you're right. Like in my mind, I was like, if something goes down, like if something for whatever reason, and we all need to run somewhere. Yeah. What the hell's gonna happen? I know that's the thing. Like that's why these these things are like that's that's like a disaster waiting to happen. Yes. I am surprised that there aren't more disasters like this mm. because there are festivals like that, like around the world. Even when I went to the carnival in Rio, yeah, guaranteed those are safety hazards. Oh like, yeah. On the street, it is jam packed full of people drunk, drunk as fuck. Mm. Like you can barely move. And it's just like, I don't know. And then like, at least you're like a, you know, like a tall guy, right? Yeah. Imagine like, you know, kid, 14 year old kids in the crowd where you can't even yeah, see. Yeah, Even I feel like when I'm in a crowd, I'm pretty short. So mm. I'm just like, oh my God. Like if I like fall, yeah. like I'm fucked. Exactly. You know? Oh God. And then like, and then put a bunch of teenagers in there. Mm. They don't give a fuck. Yeah. They're just going to be like, oh, it's fine. Like they don't, they maybe they don't fully understand mm. how dangerous that is. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. Going back to this story though, I think, you know, I don't blame people for, you know, if they're not following proper safety protocols and stuff, I think yeah. they're well within their rights to sue. Oh, 100%. And I think, but again. But it says rapper Travis Scott is facing multiple lawsuits mm-hmm. after eight, at least eight people were killed and hundreds injured in a crush at his festival. Is this his festival? Oh, anyway. At his festival, Astroworld. Yeah. But again. In, he, okay, it says. Lawsuits include allegations that Scott and surprise performer Drake incited the crowd. Mm-hmm. What does incited the crowd Like, I think mean? it means like, like get like, them excited okay. and pumped up, you know? And then that the concert producer Live Nation failed to provide adequate safety measures. Yeah, so that's who should be Yeah, I'm, under I'm very the confused. Like, yeah, I do think whoever is in charge... Here's the thing. Like, again, we don't mm. know, mm. but I feel like... These are performers. Like, they're not in charge of the safety protocols. Yeah. Am I wrong? Like, this is kind of crazy. No, no, but I, but their team, but whoever's managing the concert is. Yes. And that's it, who absolutely. should be. Absolutely. Whoever's managing and doing the security for the concert. Exactly. Exactly. But it does get a little bit shady because I remember, guys, um, there was a story a while ago about, I can't remember who it was, but um, this guy had organized um, this fight between like YouTubers and like some other people. Like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And basically, a bunch of people that partic- like, partook in it Mm -hmm. never ended up getting paid right and even though he was the organizer he was like oh but he had done it through a third party and they were actually responsible for payments and he got really like convoluted as to who was actually in charge Mm. so it was like hard to like know who you could have actually sued in that situation right i see what you're saying so but i do think this is a particular like i feel like this one's a little bit more cut and dry mm -hmm. like i feel like you can't blame the performer i'm sorry like you're in a concert yeah and i understand the like kind of like after the fact, when you see, after the fact, after you see what happens, you see the the guy, like, mm-hmm. you know, pumping up the crowd and you're thinking, what the fuck is he doing? But this is after the fact. Hindsight's twenty twenty. You knew what was happening. Yeah. But he does not know. Yeah. Every concert is like this. If you look at any concert, almost every concert, especially when there's rappers. Yeah. They're, like, hyping up the crowd. People are jumping. People are fucking crowd surfing. They're doing crazy shit. Exactly. That's every... Nobody's complaining when that happens unless somebody dies. Yeah. So, like, I agree that there should definitely be safety protocols, Mm -hmm. but you can't blame a performer for doing what they do, which is performing, in my opinion. Unless the performer is the one that organized the whole event, which I highly doubt that that's the case. No, that's not the case. Like, of course not. This guy is just there to perform. Exactly. And again, like, I mean, maybe he could, maybe he's going to learn something different. Maybe Mm. he's going to, maybe he didn't have the most, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't know the full details. Yeah. But inciting a crowd is not a crime. Yeah. The crime is not having safety protocols in a place where there's teenagers exactly. in the audience. Like, what the fuck? That's bad. Just That's bad, really bad, fucking bad, bad. Bad, bad. Maybe that should just not even, like, there should only be a certain amount. And also, like, there are a bunch of kids, like, like breaking in, too. Did you mm. see that? Yeah. Well, this is the thing. What's that about? Well, part of it was they were, they were saying that even the security at the door was like oh, really bad as I well. See. Like they were very like people were like running in and like there was a lot of like very Yeah, I saw like footage of like a bunch of kids just running into the thing. So that's probably maybe they were over capacity as well because Oh, the secu- they yeah. were definitely over capacity because the se- they said they were sold out. Yeah. And then there's people running in exactly. and like and, and apparently people were saying like the secu- the security that was on the door was like really l- like laissez faire like just watching some yeah. people run in and Who like Who is not- doing the security? They should be the ones sued 100%. Who, and, and you know what? Usually usually at these things, I could be wrong, but I think usually the security is like a third party contractor. Yeah, yeah, I think so. So they would hire like a security company to yeah, come yeah, in yeah. And, and manage. So yeah, they're usually. the ones that I'm like, uh-huh. what were you guys doing? Like, what were you thinking? Yeah. And like, oh God. I don't know. And like, I don't, again, I'm not, I'm not defending Travis Scott because of any mm-hmm. other reason that I just feel like it's not something that the performer should be mm-hmm. blamed for. Exactly. Well, it would be like, imagine like, like you held an event. Yeah. And you had a team that was organizing everything. Yes. You showed up to do, I mm-hmm. don't know, something. You leave. Later find out that somebody like yeah. tripped on a wire that was like hung out somewhere that was like shouldn't have been there. And they I, they broke their jaw mm-hmm. or something. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, and then they're trying to sue you. And it's like, yeah, well. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Like it, it's kind of like, yeah. well. Unless they could somehow prove that he knew that people were dying or, you know, it was a dangerous mm. situation. But again, it's really hard because like you said, in it's those circumstances, hard. like in a rap concert or any like big concerts, people, people get growled up. Oh, yeah. oh my God. Like when I went to daddy Yankee, what oh, the fuck is daddy Yankee? <laughs> you're joking. Rose. <laughs> is this some white people rapping? No, he's the king of reggaeton. No, I don't know. I, <laughs> reggaeton. Reggaeton. He's the king of reggaeton. <laughs> He sings. Um, I love every time Daniel says like any word that's not English. He like does the accent. 
It's well, so, especially like a Spanish word. I'm literally in shock that you don't know Daddy Yankee. I don't, I don't know anything about reggaeton. Oh my God. So he sings the, 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 Which song? the crossover hit song. that he, the big crossover hit that he had was called um, Gasolina. Gasolina. <laughs> maybe I'll, uh, maybe I would know if you know he was singing. It. Yeah, you would. <laughs> but anyway, he's huge. He's a okay, huge so artist. Okay, so you went to you went to the king of reggaeton. Yeah, and how was it, a daddy Yankee? And honestly, the crowd was crazy. Like yeah. everyone was getting wild there. Yeah, it's crazy. And like people were like crowd surfing, and like it was nuts. Yeah, that's why you need a lot of security exactly. and a lot of people like taming the crowd a little mm-hmm. bit, and also like. Not having people breaking in. I think that's one big issue. Oh, yeah. Huge. Because who knows how many people broke in. Yeah. I still can't believe you don't know who Daddy Yankee is. I'm sorry. I'm in shock, Is Rose. he, like, super famous? Like, huge. I'm sorry. I'm... You, God damn. Like, I don't listen to reggaeton. I know, but I, I, I guess, like, I don't know. It just... He... Let me see. Daddy Yankee. Yeah. Let me play a song. Oh, he's Despacito? He did a remix with... Uh, oh. Or did, did I will listen to his music, Daniel. Yeah, content. listen to something and then you'll 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 thank sounds me, basic you'll as hell. Thank me later. <laughs> no, they're really good songs. I like. I actually really like that genre of music. Just because is it's he like, is he American or what? No, he's from. Uh, I want to say Puerto Rico. Po- <laughs> Puerto, Puerto Rico. Rico. He's from Puerto Rico. <laughs> Are you a are you a Latino? No, I'm just trying to like you know. I feel like when you say places it's like hilarious, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anyway, now you've got me all embarrassed <laughs> on this podcast, guys. Puerto Rico. Um, yeah. So craziness. Um, I I really do feel bad for those young. Oh kids my god, that, that is died. so sad. Can you imagine? You went to a concert. Oh, yeah. Like. And your mom and dad being seriously like, be though, careful. And like, seriously you know, though, that's like a parent's worst nightmare. I know. Oh, oh, it's so I re- bad. I, yeah, I do remember like, cause my, my dad would like tell me about this shit. Like he'd be like, yeah, there was a concert. Um, I think it was in Korea actually this, that this happened. Yeah. Like there was like a big, I'm pretty sure it was new kids on the block. Mm. Um, like a big, you know, new kids on the block, right? Like the big boy band back yeah. in the day. Anyways, they were huge at one point for like a couple years, like mm. pretty crazy. Yeah. And so I guess they had a huge concert. I'm pretty sure in Korea. And I don't know. You know what? I'm going to Google this because I actually want to know. And then my, my dad was like, oh my God, you to avoid big crowds mm. because you can die and always look for the emergency exit. Like know where it is. <laughs> yeah. Well, there was, yeah. A, there was one in, I want to say it was in Taiwan or in China yeah. where they did like, um, you know how they do the smoke? Like that smoke stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. It <gasps> caught Did on it f- fire. Oh, yeah. And it just like lit up into the, and you could just see the whole crowd like flames. Oh my God. I was like, holy fuck. God. Like it's people so getting burned alive. That is fucked. How many people died? I don't know. I can't remember. But it was another example of like, you know, clearly some safety protocols hadn't been followed. And oh God. Okay, did, you, well, did you find the story in Korea? Okay. I don't know if this is the one, but it does say teenage girl dies during stampede. Yeah, it must be mm-hmm. at New Kids concert. It said, yeah, a teenage girl suffered a head injury during a stampede at a New Kids on the Block concert and died Wednesday. So the stampede occurred Monday evening when hundreds of teenagers, mostly girls, rushed the gymnasium gymnasium stage Mm -hmm. to get a better view of the New Kids on the Block members. More than 50 people were injured, 20 seriously. So again, similar concept. Teenagers rushing to the front of the stage to get a view, Mm. maybe like... They should just not have standing concerts for teenagers, especially. <laughs> just be like, you guys all, y'all have to be seated. Y'all have to be seated. Otherwise, you get kicked down. Exactly. Oh, Honestly, God. it's dangerous. Or only have a certain number mm. of people in a in a crowd that's like manageable. Exactly. This makes me, I think, in future concerts that I go to, I'm just going to pick to be in the seated section <laughs> for my but, own safety. But for like a music festival. I know. Yeah, that's the thing. The crazy thing is there's so many other like, um, like there's so many festivals that happen. So it, it Pardon must me, so many like so I'm going to one next year. Which one, Daniel? It's the Calvin Garden Party. What is that, Daniel? It's like a small festival. Okay. It's like in in Scotland, just like oh, okay, it's for my okay. friends like wedding right, kind of thing. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah, I mean they're usually really fun and but, you know, like that's fucking scary. Mm-hmm. It is scary. So guys, just be really careful. Be careful. Know where the emergency exits are. <laughs> Stay in the back. If you're outside, just stay in the back. Okay? Stay a little bit further. I know Those y'all. rappers, they're not going to see your fucking face. Exactly. Okay. I know y'all want to be right <laughs> at the front. You want to touch their hand. I mean, I, I used to like doing that kind of shit. I recall, actually, I'm pretty sure that we were at Ministry of Sound and there was a DJ there 
and we were with a few of your friends and you were like, I need to get to the front. And you were like wanting to like, didn't you give him I a high five? I touched his hand. That's right. Yes. Who was it? It was rehab. Yes, that's right. Because I had the hots for him. Yeah. And I Rose was like, is like oh my is- God, I touched his hand. Yeah. He like, he like grabbed my hand. I was like, oh my God, we're married. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Rose. I was on like, I was like some, on someone's shoulders too, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I was doing the whole shoulder thing. Probably a safety hazard. Oh Yeah. Especially when you're drinking or you're like, you know what I mean? And you jump on fine. someone's shoulders. If you fall off, God damn. God damn, you just grab on. I, I don't know if I told you. You gotta make sure that the whoever you're jumping on is like, you know, strong. I, um, speaking of that, <laughs> I, I went to the dentist. This was years ago. And, um, dentist, okay. Yeah. And no, it just, this story brought me back uh-huh. memories. Um, and I was in the dentist <laughs> and this was like, again, I would think I was like 16 or 17 at the time. Sure. Just in the dentist. And this girl came in. She was 18. It was her 18th birthday, like two days before. And she'd gone out that night for her 18th birthday. What did she break? She smashed all of her front <gasps> teeth. I guess she like jumped on someone's back through a piggyback and fell and oh, smacked God. into the concrete. Yeah. And so all of her teeth were shattered. No. I was like, oh my okay, God. I will never go on someone's shoulders again. Well, just be careful, Rose. Okay. Yes. I'm a careful. Make sure it be a strong man. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so not me. I only- <laughs> I only get on the strong man, you know. Mm-hmm. Anyway, continuing mm-hmm. on. Continuing What's on. What's the so, next story? So again, the, so that was, I mean. I mean, it's fucking tragic. I know. So sad. And we don't know how many people got injured, do we? I assume a lot of people. It, it just says a lot. I think. Uh, yeah. So guys, when people are crowding, rushing to the front, just fucking stay back. Okay. It is says, not worth it. No. To risk your life. Just as a dozen more were injured at the Astroworld Music Festival in Texas. Oh, God. It's so, like... Mm-hmm. It isn't worth it. Like, I mean, I know that people are like, oh, I want to go in the whole experience. But you can see a lot when you're, yeah. like, still farther back. And you don't have to be, like, right at the back. But, like, be in a place where it's, like, a little bit more, like, There's sparsely. More space. Yeah. Because, and to be honest, I don't, I don't think I've ever been, like, right up at the front of a thing. And I think it would stress me out. Yeah. I mean, the thing Especially is, when people, people are, pushing. like, yeah. When people start pushing, that's when you need to get the fuck out, right? That's You scary. can be kind of in the front. Like, I've been in, like, a pretty, like, front stage sort of situation. Yeah. But, like, if people are, like, pushing me and there's, like, like some like actual pushing going on, yeah. then I need to like, I need to get the fuck out of there. Like, yeah. Cause that's when you can yeah. get pushed and crushed up against exactly the... when there's like, when there's too many crowding you as well. Oh, like God, it stresses yeah. me out. It gives me like yeah. heart palpitations. Cause like, cause like when I went to Tomorrowland, there was a lot of people, but it was never, like, I don't remember it being ever like crowded to the point where I felt like, you know, there's like people like touching, you know, I think it's cause the, the, obviously this place went over capacity, right? Like, the, I think so. Because even all the concerts and festivals I've gone to, even when you get close to the front, there's usually like a bit of space. Yes. Like, like I've never be. been at one where it's been so like, but again, crazy. we're dealing with teenagers and minors. Here yeah, that's true. That don't like necessarily think about the, you know, and they don't mind being like in a big crowd mm-hmm. and like, you know, they think it's cool. Like yeah. maybe, I don't know. Like they don't have the potential knowledge that you could potentially, you know, die or get mm-hmm. hurt and you know it's that's why they, they should like why why are there 14 year olds at this thing like i don't know they wanted to go see travis scott they're a big i fan. mean yeah I, th- I think he's quite famous among the, the young kids yeah you know oh but anyway yeah it's it's fucking sad mm-hmm. i guess we'll see what happens yeah. i guess they're getting sued yeah um we'll see i mean we will see what happens oh god, oh god. um oh god what's next daniel the next thing that I wanted Ooh. to talk about, it's not really a story, but I wanted to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, we should watch it. I know. Okay, talk about it, Daniel. So guys, um, this actually came up on my um, Instagram feed. I can't remember what, um, who it was that was like mm-hmm. posting, but basically there's a new documentary coming out. I don't know if it's out right now, but I think it's like coming out, okay. coming soon. And to, uh, coming soon to a Netflix near you. Coming soon to a Netflix near us. Um, so basically it's called Milked. Um, and it caught my eye cause it's like, obviously it's uh, talking about the dairy industry. Yes. Um, and I guess it's like, um, a young activist in New Zealand. His name is, I'm going to pronounce it wrong. Chris Hurui, Hurui, Hurui. Um, sure. I guess, I guess, <laughs> I guess he lives in New Zealand and he's seeing, cause New Zealand has a massive dairy industry. Right. Multi, I think that's like their biggest export or something. I could be wrong, really? but it's up there. Like right. it's up there. Um, and he's, he's like commenting cause he's seeing firsthand really the detrimental impact that this is having right. on the small environment that is New Zealand. I mean, New Zealand's not a big country, mm-hmm, like it's mm-hmm. small and it's very like 
beautiful and pristine for the most part. But obviously dairy farming is taking a huge toll on that country. Um, And this documentary kind of just like starts to look into that. And, you know, obviously you can extrapolate it wider, like to the wider, wider, the wider world. Um, I'm not sure if it's by the same people. It says, um, there's interviews Mm -hmm. with high profile contributors, such as Dr. Jane Goodall, environmentalist and, there's actresses, there's Cowspiracy co-director Keegan mm-hmm. and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I don't know who it, who produced it. Yeah. But um, I'd be interested to, to watch it. I definitely would be. I love, a, I love a good documentary. I love a good documentary. Yeah. I hope they talk about not just the environment, but also what happens to the cows. Yeah. In the industry. Yeah. Um, and I do like the fact that it's like kind of, it's in New Zealand where people would probably like assume that it's like a, you know, it's done really well and you know like cows are treated well and everything's fine and you know Mm -hmm. they're following all the protocols because the fact is that it's not just like developing countries that you know treat the animals bad or pollute the environment it's like everywhere but i think i and i agree with that and i think actually mm -hmm. some of the worst offenders are the developed countries more or more developed countries yes because they're the ones that have these like massive factory farms Uh and all this shit and And like consume all of this shit too yeah exactly i think the biggest eye-opener for me though is like and again i think i've talked about this before when it comes to the the whole dairy industry and you guys might think i'm stupid on this podcast i don't care but like (laughs) the biggest thing for me which i never made this um, connection before. Yeah. But the connection of, of the fact that like in order for a cow to give milk, yeah, they have to have a baby. I know. I didn't think about that either. Isn't I know. that crazy? I just thought, oh, they're just cows. They must just always produce milk. Exactly. I think a lot of people actually thought that. Oh, hundred yeah. percent. I thought that for years. I, know. I, I, I don't even think I even like thought about it, but I just yeah. assumed I was like, okay, yeah. Like if you're a cow, you're just like making babies. Just like how or making milk. You yeah, know? yeah. 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 Just like with chickens and, and like eggs, you know what I right. mean? Because like, they do lay eggs like quite frequently. Right. But I was thinking like, oh, a cow, they just, they must just keep giving yeah. milk, you know? I know. And then, yeah. And then I found out, okay, they have to be pregnant. Yeah. They have to they be have pregnant. They have to like give birth. They have to give birth. And it's then crazy. that baby has to be taken away. I know. It's insane. And then, and then I think they only last for like a year or something of milking or something or eight months. Yeah. It's and then not they have that get, long. Like it's not like a very, it's, it's probably the amount of time that it would take a cow to like a calf to like grow up. Yeah. And then it starts to run dry and then guess what happens? They get killed. They get pregnant again. Oh God. Yeah. Oh God. I, oh God. Honestly, dairy industry is probably the worst one mm. of all. A lot of people think it's not as bad because, you mm. know, they're not getting killed, but they are getting killed in the end mm. because I'm pretty sure like once they, you know, are spent, I think that's yeah. the term they use. So once they can, can no longer like use this cow for the milk, just imagine like, I know we're not cows, but like, yeah. just imagine like this is your life. Like you are forcibly getting pregnant yeah and then you have a baby Which and the remo- one joy that you have in your life the one thing that you love gets taken removed away. from you gets taken away from you and then you are stuck to a machine getting milked every single day yeah and then you you, you get like infections like it's like disgusting like yeah. they get huge like what are they called the udders or whatever yeah, the udders, yeah. they get huge and then you're milked constantly. And then you have to repeat yourself until you your body like is just giving away. And you can't have any more babies. And then they kill you. Yeah. What the fuck? I know. It sounds like a horrible torture. It's, like it's actual torture. And the sad thing is like cows are just so gentle and mm-hmm. sweet and kind and they're just they're just chilling. Like I think I think the thing that's frustrating me now uh-huh. or not frustrating me now, but like at the end of the day, like now as we're pro- progressing as society and everything it's like we don't need these products anymore I know. you know what i mean like we don't need i don't think we ever we, needed them I mean, to begin yes. with but if we like didn't have any calories like i get it back in the day maybe okay but mm-hmm. we have more knowledge now exactly and the thing is is like we literally like especially when it, you know like looking specifically at dairy actually yeah. is like there's so many milk alternatives now mm-hmm. which are actually like in my personal opinion obviously like i'm a little bit biased but like Honestly, like my biggest thing that I thought that I would miss when I like in terms of like dairy is my lattes. Like I love a latte. Yeah. Like that's one of my favorite, like, you know, Saturday morning or Sunday morning, mm-hmm. get like a nice latte. But honestly, having them with oat milk. Yeah. Like game changer, guys. I honestly, know. I know some people are like really diehard soy fa- soy fans, <laughs> soy milk. But like, honestly, for me, like the soy milk, it gave the when, when I had it in a latte, it gave it more of a metallic taste a little oh, bit. Oh, Interesting. But the oat milk makes it so creamy it's and it, so good. it brings out the f- flavors in the coffee. And like, if you have that, it's like you can even even have your cereal with that. Everything that you would do with milk, I you know. can do with oat milk or soy milk. So like, it's just like, you just don't need this anymore. Like there's I no know. need for it. But anyway. That's, people be addicted to cheese. Mm-hmm. 
But I'm hoping, you know, the more, the thing, the, the nice Cheese thing has is, gotten so much better though. Yeah. Like vegan cheese has oh. gotten so much better. I have some really good stuff in my fridge God right now. Dang, should we have, should we have a bee? Do you want a piece? Uh, I'll be okay. Okay. <laughs> Um, but it definitely has come, it's come a long way. And and I, I think one of the positive things that I'm seeing is the fact that these types of documentaries are coming out. I know. Like, look, in the last, like, five or ten, I don't know, I can't remember when Cowspiracy came out. But we had, like, Cowspiracy, yeah. Seaspiracy. Now we have Milk. I wonder if we it's have, made like, any changes. I do want to know. I, I, I think that it has. Like, I would, yeah. I would imagine that it has. And I think, you know. I hope so. I think I read somewhere, maybe it was in the UK or something, but the sales of, like, dairy alternatives. Yes was like oh, skyrocketing. I mean, think about it, right? I was thinking the other day, um, how insane in terms of obviously cheese, people are still addicted and it's it's probably still selling just as much. I don't yeah. know. But think about just milk, right? Yeah. Like having almond milk and oat milk is now so normalized. Oh, huge. That not like non-vegans will also eat like almond milk or drink almond milk and soy milk. Yeah. And back in the day, like, I, like everyone was just drinking milk. Like, yeah. I remember um, when I was in Korea and stuff, Mm -hmm. my parents, I never liked milk. Like I never liked like white milk. Like I liked like strawberry milk or chocolate Chocolate milk. milk I used to love chocolate milk. But I never liked actual milk. But my parents would be like, you need to drink milk because it's like good for your bones. You need strong bones. You need to, you know, get tall, whatever. Yeah. And I hope people are not saying that to their kids anymore because that's so much propaganda. Mm. And they got milk ads. Remember those? Yes. So much milk industry propaganda. I'm glad we're kind of like, you know, moving past that, hopefully. Yeah. Well, they, they also said, like, I think in Canada, didn't they revise the the periodic table of food? Or like, did you they know, get like, rid of milk? I hope they did. I can't remember. I think they got, yeah, like it got better. The, yeah. the, the food pyramid because became the f- like a plate. Yes. It? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it became a lot more, uh, you know, it became a lot better. Because like, remember back, yeah, the food pyramid had like an entire section on milk and dairy products. Yeah. Well, fucking crazy. It was crazy. And it was saying that we should have at least two to three of those a day. The it's insane. Plus two to three servings of meat a day. No wonder we'd be sick as hell. I know. And then it, going on uh, like this tangent, guys, uh-huh. though, as well, talking about this, milk and everything else, there was like a really big summit that happened. Uh-huh. Um, it was the CO, I think it was called COP26. Uh-huh. And um, there was a guy there. Oh, I wish I could remember his name. And he is like a CEO or founder of one of these like um, meat alternative companies. Oh, okay. And he was there speaking on like a panel or something like this. Sure. And um, he was just like speaking to all the people. And he was like, <laughs> he's like, guys, the craziness at this event is is mind blowing. He's like, how can we sit here? Mm-hmm. And he's like, we're literally right across because I guess they're at a dinner or whatever. Sure. Like we're serving steaks. We're doing all this. He called stuff. it out. Yeah, he called oh, it out. I'm so happy. And he was like, it would be like going. And he he went on to say he was like, it would be like going to like um, a you know cancer conference and giving people like smokes yeah. and like you know things that like things that are known to like be cancer yeah. carcinogenic. Sorry. Yeah. Um, and he's like, how can we be at a climate change event and be eating steak? I, that's insane. Like it, that's actually insane. And we're we're talking about. And the thing is, you he, can't go one meal. Like come yeah. on. And and the thing is, is they also talked about in this in this COP, and I don't I don't know the full like what they what was discussed. Uh-huh. But again, whenever they talk about the climate change measures, they always talk about like you know cars, uh, company emissions, yeah. all of this kind of stuff. But they never ever 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 discuss about the, the the food industry. I know, and I don't understand why when it is such a big contributor to they're so. They're all like intertwined. They're maybe sponsored by one of those companies. But also like the, the energy companies are billion dollar companies with yeah, so much money. Maybe it's like, I don't know what it is. It's so frustrating. Yeah. It's like, why is it not at least talked about, you know, again, not even just like, it's just like, even just, even just, I would love it if they even just mentioned about reducing, mm-hmm. you know, re- not even telling people that they have to stop, but like yeah. everyone reduce it to like a very minimal amount. Yeah. Like, I know it's insane. It's crazy. But yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm yeah. I'm glad more, more and more of these documentaries need to be coming out, mm-hmm. um, because we be we be fucking in a state of emergency. Well, we are, and honestly, like I was over at my parents' house last week, and um, every single story that was coming online and oh, all this God. stuff, it was like it maybe it's really making me feel like anxious. Yeah, I'm like I feel like we're getting to that. You know that we always talk about the tipping point, that yeah. point of no return, and it's like I feel like in the last couple of years the stories around and maybe I'm just noticing it more. I don't know. It's definitely, but so many more stories around global warming, what's happening with our climate, all these like crazy weather pattern changes. Like it's actually really, really scary. And 
I don't know what's going to happen. I know. It's actually terrifying. Like, I don't want to get too much into the rabbit hole because it's going to, I'm going to like have a moment and I'm not ready for that on this podcast just right now. How are we going to change? I don't know. But anyway, this is a start and hopefully, you know. Yeah. I don't know when it's going to come out. I just checked Netflix. It's not on there. Yeah. But um, we all should watch it and share it on social media. Mm -hmm. And hopefully it'll, you know, wake some people up because, Mm -hmm. you know, for a very long time, dairy industry has had so much power and they still do. Yeah. But we got to crush them. Poor fucking cows. Can I just make a fucking another statement? Like, yeah, you can. Go I, ahead, Rose. <laughs> it makes me so sad because cows are just used and abused so much. Yeah. Like for beef, for leather, for milk. I mean, veal. Mm-hmm. Veal is a cow, right? Yeah, I believe so. It's a baby cow, right? Veal is a baby cow. I don't know. Fuck, I've been vegan so long. I don't even know. I. It's baby something. I'm pretty yeah. sure it's cow. Like... Can we leave them alone? Like, holy fuck. Mm-hmm. They are fucking gentle, beautiful creatures. Like, they are, like, they don't deserve this shit. Like, I don't understand. I know. You know, like, it, it makes no fucking sense. They're like giant dogs. Like, they're like giant, gentle dogs. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. Like, it's crazy. It's crazy. And, and the fact that we've normalized this, like, thing that, that we squeeze milk. Like, if you look at a cow's udders and, like, squeeze them, like, most people are, like, you know, a little bit like, ugh. Like, you're not going to put your head down there and be yeah. like. Yeah. Like, just it's not normal i know i watched another thing it was like it was a, it was a clip of people doing this prank on people uh-huh. and then I, I, have i told you about this i one don't before? know so basically this person was like there and they were like had this like table you know how sometimes at the mall or like at a they'll have right. like samples right uh-huh and people were like oh come sample this milk it's like delicious blah, was blah, it blah. human milk no did they say it was human milk no oh okay they said it was dog milk Oh, and then they freak the fuck out. Oh, yeah. They were like, t- people are like, mm, oh, my God, what have you done with this? It's an interesting <laughs> blend. I mean, it probably, I don't know if it actually was dog milk. No, of course it was not. Yeah. They were w- just saying it was. Exactly. And then they're like, oh, this is so delicious. And they're like, oh, by the way, so it comes from dogs. And then what do they say? And then the people are like, oh, my God, that's disgusting. Why would you I know. do that? Is that crazy? And then it's like, but like, how What's is that? The any, difference? How is that any different? And mm- then people also freak out about that. There's a, there's an episode of Friends that I love because it really highlights just like how brainwashed we are about and ingrained milk. in society. Yeah. So one of the episodes is like, it's about breast milk. Mm. So there's like, basically there's like a scene where like Phoebe randomly, cause like they're like feeding, you know, um, the, one of the babies like breast milk yeah. and then like Phoebe like tries the breast milk and then everyone's like freaks out. They're like, mm. Oh my God, that's so gross. That's milk. That's juiced squeezed from a person. That's disgusting. Yeah. And I'm just like, well, you drink juice squeezed from an a cow. Yeah. What is different? Like, it's fucking, it's the same shit. It's juiced squeezed from a living being. Like, mm-hmm. it's probably more normal for us to drink human milk. Well, it is because we exactly. we drink that growing up. Exactly. So, like, getting, like, Ugh. you know. Anyways. Oh, God. Fuck the milk, guys. Mm-hmm. Drink your oat milk your non-dairies mm. honestly guys if you haven't uh, you know for those of you that are listening that you know haven't tried oat milk mm-hmm. honestly try it in your <laughs> latte it's effing delicious i love it although mm-hmm. uh, you always get an upcharge i know right always not at my cafe i know it's all vegan go to rose's cafe <laughs> i'm a regular there you might see me just sitting there eating a the bulgogi burrito <laughs> by myself in a corner um the last story that i wanted to touch on is it is it about the comedy? Oh God, it's about the comedy. Yes. <laughs> um. So it's about the Dave Chappelle uh, comedy <laughs> show. So I did watch it, guys, because I was like, you know what? There was all this like backlash, and you know, people are up in arms about what. And I'm probably gonna get some hate for this, but I don't care. Okay, but let me let me just put everyone up to speed in case mm-hmm. people did not watch or listen to the True. last episode. Okay. Basically, the um the story is that David Chappelle, Dave Chappelle, yeah, David Chappelle. <coughs> that sounds really weird. It does sound weird. Dave Chappelle, Mm -hmm. um, who is a comedian, very famous comedian, he did a Netflix special where he made a bunch of jokes about trans people, Mm -hmm. which resulted in a ton of backlash and also like people trying to walk out of Netflix, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Continue. Well, he did a series. He did like a, he he partnered with Netflix to do like a comedy series. He did a couple other episodes as well. Like Mm. they're, they're quite spaced out though. It's not like a quite you know, consecutive. And in the other ones, he also had some trans jokes as yeah. well. I didn't see all of them guys. So I don't know the full, you know, story. And, sure. he, and he got a lot of backlash for those. So he commented in this one about the backlash. Um, and he did talk about it. And again, I do feel like, yes, there were some jokes in there that were like borderline where I was like, Oh, but at the same, t- at the same time, never. And maybe because I'm not trans, I don't know. But by watching it, I was like, 
I never felt like he was being disrespectful. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, sometimes, and I have, I have seen some comedians where I'm actually like, hmm, Actually, I really don't like you and I don't like right. what you're saying and it's not funny. Like, you're just being mean. You know right. what I mean? Like, there, you do get that impression. But with him, honestly, genuinely, like, I just felt like there wasn't, at least from my perspective, guys, like, I didn't feel like this. People were commenting that he was, like, punching down on the trans community and, like, constantly, like, harassing them and all this stuff. And it's like, it was a small segment of his whole Right. Thing. Like he talked about a ton of other stuff. He talked a lot about like black people and white people and sure. you know, all of this kind of stuff. Like he talked about so much and he talked about like Jews and like <laughs> Jewish people, everything. Like literally it was like no hold back on anything. Yeah. But it was all done in like a relatively like I feel like respectful way. Like never at any point was I like, oh, he's being really nasty. And actually he was quite open because it was part of it was like him ranting as well, sure. which was kind of funny. But um, there was a part where he opened up and he actually had met uh, a, tr- a fellow comedian that was trans when he was in um, San Diego or San Francisco, some somewhere around yeah. there. And he formed a really, really good friendship with this. Um, I can't remember what her name was. Um, and basically he had her open for a bunch of his shows. Um, and it, I remember he like he, he said the first show that he had with her, he like asked her to come open for him. And she was like, Oh my God, really? She was so excited and, and passionate. And he was like, and she bombed. (laughs) It was so bad. And then he said afterwards though, like all the comedians were backstage and they were chatting and she was so funny. Right. And he was like, you are funny. Like, he's like, you know what? Every time I come down here, I want you to open up my shows. I'm going to coach you. I'm going to like teach you and whatever else. And he formed like a really um, mutually respective, re- respectful relationship with this person. And guess what? It didn't matter that she was trans. Sure. It didn't matter at all. And he actually had so much respect for her. And he said like, he's like, you know what? The fact that she, you know, even after having that bomb, the set the bomb, mm-hmm. she was still so cheerful and wanting to get involved. And like, she didn't care, you know? Right. And I think he said there was someone made a comment or in the audience or something. And she like, quipped back or whatever it's called yeah, and yeah. it was so funny and so good and the crowd was laughing and he was like you know what it was amazing anyway long story short she um when he was getting all this backlash from the trans community she actually tweeted in support of him yeah. because of you know they had a really good relationship and she thought she, again her relationship with him even though he did the trans jokes and everything else was very professional they respected each other um, and she knew that again, it was just joke. Like it's comedy. It's comedy. Yeah. And so she tweeted, um, and I, I I'm, I'm going to misquote it a little bit, but she was like, um, Dave Chappelle doesn't punch up, doesn't punch down. Um, he just punches lines and he's a master at his craft. Mm. And I was like, and, and apparently she got a ton of backlash for that. Yeah. Um, and then, um, she ended up, and again, he, he mentioned this in the show, he didn't specifically say why, because he doesn't know why, but I guess she took her own life. Yeah. After all of this this stuff that was going on. He said it could have been for a multitude of reasons. That's oh, so sad. He, really, really sad. And then he said, though, um, which I thought was like so touching. I think he said, I can't remember exactly what he said he's going to do, but she had like a, a son, I believe. Okay. And I think he's he's putting like a college fund away for oh. her son. And I was like, oh my God. It was like, and you could tell like, even though he was like a comedian, like he was quite yeah and he made a joke about her as well and her like right you know yeah, yeah. taking her life but like it was in, in a okay. weird like joke oh, kind of okay. way yeah but again he was like and he, and some people were like oh you know and he was like well you know what if you knew her she would have thought this was funny oh like he made a joke about her taking her own life yeah yeah, okay. yeah. some i can't remember exactly what it was but again i think but yeah like that itself like people you wouldn't you wouldn't expect people to get mad at that, you know? Because, mm-hmm. like, that's, like, suicide, you know? Should you be joking about suicide? Exactly. That's the crazy thing. It's, like... Well, and I th- <sighs> I think the fact, like, take 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 Dave Chappelle, and again, I don't know him, guys. Like, I don't know him <laughs> personally, obviously, but take him out of that comedy routine, and the fact that he, you know, has friendships and yeah. with, with people in the trans community, right. he is not transphobic. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. if you're a transphobic person, you're not going to be friends with trans people. Right. You're not going to be building them up and trying to help them get into the, to comedy and doing right. things and not care whether mm-hmm. or not they're trans. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I, again, I think this, the, the community that just like jumped on him like this, I it's, know, it's, it's kind of crazy. It, it bothers me a little I know. bit. It's a, it's a little crazy. Yeah. I don't know. And this is just my take guys. Like, you know, maybe I'm missing something here. Yeah. yeah. You know, maybe there was something <laughs> and I'm not saying that his jokes w- were, you know, the most tasteful. There was a few that I, you know, mentioned to you the other day that were yeah. a little bit like, I need to watch this. Yeah. I need to watch it. I would maybe be, I'll report back next yeah, week. I'll be interested to know your opinion. Just like, 
just see the special and yeah. see what your what your overall feeling yeah. is at the end. I just want to know, like, because I heard I heard some arguments, people saying that, like, you know, people like you trans people are allowed to make jokes about trans people. Mm -hmm. But if you're outside of the trans community, you, you should not be making jokes about trans people's and their struggles. I'm like, mm -hmm. well, I don't think he's making jokes. I mean, did he make jokes about their struggles? I don't know if that's what the joke was. I can't remember all of them. Why but. can't people make jokes if they're outside of the community? That's the whole point of comedy. People have been doing that for centuries. Exactly. And 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 I don't know. Again, it's a weird yeah. gray area, but it's like you want inclusion. Yeah. You want to be included in the regular everyday society. Yeah. So you can't pick and choose exempt things. From, I feel like. Exactly. Yeah, like, I agree. I agree. But I mean, who knows? I mean, yeah. it's it's I know it's a sensitive topic. I understand yeah. that. But at the same time, it's like you have to look at and also like it's kind of shocking to me that he specifically gets so much backlash because pe like there are people on like you know fox news like conservative people yeah that are literally trans like they are literally against people. Yeah. trans like trans people yeah ben shapiro is very anti-trans yeah like i feel like he doesn't get half this backlash i like, know and I, I get it. I could almost put money on it that Ben Shapiro doesn't have any trans friends. <laughs> yeah. I could put money on it. So I think, I think again, like taking him outside of his work and his comedy and seeing how he's behaving in his everyday life. Right. Like, I but think that's a could, reflector I mean, of the person. Sure. You could also say though, that like, just cause somebody has a trans friend doesn't necessarily mean that they're like, um, yeah, no, they're like fully on board with the trans. Of course. Thing, right? Of course. So you yeah. could say that, but at the same time, it's like, you know, I don't think he's necessarily against the idea of, you know, people becoming trans mm -hmm. or like being trans sorry yeah. um he's not against that he's yeah. just like you know it's a it's an interesting concept and you can laugh about it if you know mm. it's it's a very you know it's a phenomenon that is you know it, an interesting thing that mm. you could you know you could potentially make a joke about yeah you know? i mean and, and it really i feel like the trans community and the trans uh -huh. i guess media and everything i feel like in the last kind of while it's almost like the you know the gay lgbt the uh -huh. well, the gay movement that sure. became really you know it's getting more and more in the media and yeah, shows yeah, yeah. and everything else and now we have the trans is trans communities coming up as well mm -hmm. i feel like um i've lost my train of thought <laughs> where, I was, where i was going with that i don't know i don't mm -hmm. know where you're going with that i mean i think i do wonder how many people i mean it must have been a big backlash yeah enough to like make headlines i don't know yeah or was it a small fringe group that was very loud mm. who knows who like, does know out of the i do want to know like i wonder if they've done a poll or something on like which of the trans people like how many trans people found this actually offensive mm -hmm. and how many were just like it's just a joke like yeah. i have more bigger problems you know exactly. i just i would imagine that you have bigger problems yeah like it could be the it could be the fact that it's like the little the 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 few people are the loudest do you know what I mean? yeah like, so that like, could be a, a big part of it people that like, i'm sorry to say this but it's like again there's bigger problems there's mm -hmm. actual trans issues that i feel like deserve a lot more attention and yeah. i you know like a comedy show somebody making a few jokes about you know body parts or whatever mm. i feel like it's not should not be biggest the biggest concern yeah but anyways anyways let me know what you guys think if yeah. you agree or disagree completely let us know mm -hmm. Let us know your thoughts. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to watch it. This yeah, watch week. it. Just this is my give homework. It a, give it a spin, guys. Yes. And, and the thing is, I watched his other one where he got backlash and I totally am on your side where it's like, I don't think it was that bad. Yeah. It was just jokes. Because again, guys, like I've seen, I have seen comedians where uh -huh. I've actually been like, they've said a joke, but like the way they've gone about it in their whole show, right. I felt like it was disrespectful. Uh -huh. I was like, oh, like yeah, that yeah. doesn't sit right with me. But then with, with him, it's like, at least my interpretation again is yeah. I felt like there was no like negative or seedy underbelly sure. of it. Do you know what I yeah. mean? Like, you know, it'd be different if, if in the headlines, you know, he's caught like trans bashing and sure. you know, all yeah. this kind of stuff. And then he's like really ripping into trans people on his show, but exactly. like really aggressively. Like, I don't know. That's just my, my two cents yeah. guys. Um, anyway, guys, um, hope you enjoyed this episode. Mm -hmm. Um, go watch the Dave Chappelle <laughs> special if you won't be offended. Yeah. And um, let us know your thoughts in the mm -hmm. comments. If you are watching on YouTube, of course, give us a big thumbs up. And of course, subscribe if you haven't already. Yeah. And make sure you join us on Patreon for as little as uh, $3 a month. You can get all of that juicy exclusive content. Yes. And you can get the episodes a week earlier than everybody else and mm -hmm. add free content, which is, of course, amazing. It's a benefit for uh -huh. sure. 
<laughs> and what else should they do, Daniel? Well, if you guys are listening to us on your favorite podcast platform, um, don't forget to give the podcast a rating if you haven't already. Maybe give us five stars, guys. Um, and also, if you can, just hit the little follow button if you're listening on Spotify or on iTunes. Um, and then, yeah, then you'll get updated every time that a new episode is released. Yes, guys. Yeah. Thanks so much for listening. Thank you so much, guys. We'll you guys. My throat hurts. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs> see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.